Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. Today it was going to be a fix it guide showing you how to restore a vintage Mattel Castle Grayscale from He Man. As you can see here in front of me, I have a Castle Grayscale, uh, which is just the bare bones empty shell at the moment. I do have all the bits for it, and there are a few things that I will need to fix along the way. This was very kindly given to me by my friend and fellow collector, Uncle He Man, who is a massive uh, He Man collector and uh, has actually got a few of these. And this was one that he had spare that uh, he'd uh, been restoring but uh, sort of given up on uh, after breaking a part of it. If you look at the front of this, this looks like a normal. Uh, Castle Grayskull, but there are actually two different types of Castle Grayskull, and this is the rarer one, which has uh, a different shaped door. If you look here, this is a normal door, front door for a Castle Grayskull, you can see it's got very small pegs on it. This one here is a larger peg version of the uh, front door, and unfortunately one side has snapped, so that's something that I'm going to have to uh, repair during this video. So uh, let's take a look at this and we'll get on with the fix-it guide. Overall, this Grayskull is in pretty good condition. None of the clips are broken, which is always good, and none of the hinges are broken, so that's a, a, an added bonus. I think if the hinges were broken, the only thing you could do is be to actually replace them with a normal hinge and somehow attach it to them because uh, there's no way really to glue that plastic once it's snapped it is snapped for good so the first thing to do really with this great card is to strip it down of all its parts i've obviously taken out all of the loose bits you need to remove the two floors and other bits and give it a good clean uh, there's only one sticker on this castle great card that i want to keep so let's have a look at that and that is the sticker at the bottom here. This is in uh, pretty good condition. It's been stuck on reasonably well. So uh, when I clean it, I'm not going to uh, remove that. I'm just going to try and work my way around it so that that sticker doesn't get damaged. The only other stickers that this uh, Grayskull has on it at the moment are the one on the uh, throne chair, so I can leave that, and then the sticker that's on the trapdoor here. As you can see, it started to peel up, so I think I'm actually going to remove that. The glue, or actually just looking at it, the glue is pretty much gone on it so I'm just going to carefully peel that sticker off then I think uh, I can flatten that and uh, repair it enough that we can just put that straight back on rather than making a reproduction one otherwise there are a few things that we need to make reproductions for which is the little banner sticker that hangs down here under this side and also the cardboard inserts I'm going to uh, create from scratch because uh, those don't exist uh, or didn't come with this version so uh, I need to make those again so uh, let's get to go ahead and sort of get this all cleaned up I'm just going to wash it in uh, hot soapy water and then once that's done we can start putting it all back together and see about fixing the drawbridge hinge uh, that was the broken bit I've shown you. Removing the floors and other bits is fairly straightforward on these. Most of them are just clipped in. Some don't clip in particularly well, like this floor here on this one. You can actually just pull it out uh, with ease. And then if you turn it over, all the bits underneath are really just sort of very loosely clipped in. So as long as you're careful, none of this stuff is going to uh, sort of damage. If I just sort of wiggle the throne there, like so, you can see that that just pops off and then the rest of this uh, sort of function uh, is easy enough to remove like so and likewise this trapdoor um, it's held on with two little clips here and I would have thought with some gentle pushing uh, it's not going to be too hard to remove like that so now you can see that the glue that's left on here I'm just going to uh, initially I will wash this with hot soapy water and if that doesn't clean it then I'm sure some lighter fluid will remove this old glue residue before we put the uh, sticker back in place there and then likewise this floor on the other side where the lift uh, mechanism goes, again you can just sort of gently unclip it on the side. These clips uh, don't hold them in particularly well so it doesn't take much effort to unclip that and then remove that. So now uh, the bulk of the inside bits are removed. There's obviously a couple of little panels at the top but again those just slide out like so. So here's the main hinge clip. There's two of these, one at the top and one at the bottom, which I'll show you in a minute. Unclipping them, as long as you're careful, you can unclip these. Just gently sort of rotate and unclip like that. And if I just move the camera down so you can see the bottom one. So uh, you can do the same, just gently unclip it. Uh, they are fairly forgiving. There you go, and that's open. Uh, it, Sometimes these clips can be a little bit brittle, so just do take it a little bit easy when you're doing it, but uh, really unclipping shouldn't be too much of a problem. That means the whole of this castle is now in the smallest sort of section it can be, and we can go ahead and uh, give it a wash in some hot soapy water. Thank you. 
After giving everything a good clean, the trap door here you can still see has a bit of uh, glue residue left on it. Some of it washed off in the hot soapy water, but there's a lot of it left on. So I thought I would try my standard sort of way of removing this, which is a bit of kitchen towel and some lighter fluid. Lighter fluid is particularly good at uh, dissolving old glue. So um, if I put a liberal amount on this um, kitchen towel and then just sort of rub it in, hopefully that will start to shift it and uh, remove some of the uh, rough residue that's left on this surface. It may take some time as this is pretty old glue, but it normally seems to work quite nicely. So I've given this a good scrub and uh, rub down there, and it's improved it a bit, but actually it seems that the surface of this uh, plastic has been sort of damaged by the whatever glue was used on the sticker. So it's actually sort of pitted and got little raised sections. If I rub my nail across it, you can hear how uh, rough the surface is. So uh, I may try and just rub that down with a slight bit of um, sort of emery paper or something like that just to soften it a bit. And then once the stick is stuck back, up, back on, um, it should be fine because you're not going to see it anyway. So yeah, a bit of uh, sort of uh, emery or something like that just to uh, take the edge off that should, uh, should help quite a lot. So here I have a bit of uh, very fine emery paper and I'm just going to rub that over the really rough areas of this just to uh, take some of the really large bits off. Uh, and that should improve it quite a lot. So I'll just gently rub that over. I can uh, wipe down. Yeah, that's feeling much better now. So by the time we stick the sticker back on, uh, that should be it should uh, work quite nicely. As you can see here, I have two doors. Now they look the same, but there is a subtle difference between uh, these two doors, and it's to do with how the front section of this castle grey skull is built. Early versions of the castle use this door, where they have quite small little uh, pegs on either side, as you can see there, that fit into two little holes on the front here. And uh, if I put this door in here, you'll notice that it doesn't fit properly. And that's because later releases, the design was changed, and the front section uh, of uh, the little hinge brackets here were angled outwards so they modified the door to give it larger pegs. If I hold these two up together you can see that this one has a longer peg than that one so uh, this door will never fit in uh, the front of this castle grayscale. What we need is one with long pegs. Now unfortunately the one that I was given here one of the pegs, this one's good, the other one has snapped off. So uh, what we're going to do is to uh, find a way to uh, make a new peg to go in there so that this door will fit on the front of Castle Grayskull. There's also a slight problem here that it's um, just coming apart. The glue has failed at this top bit and it's starting to crack there. So we we'll also need to glue that back together. But the first thing to do is work out a way to remake this little peg. So my initial thought was uh, the fact that this is like a little cross section. It looks a lot like a bit of Lego. So I went to my tools box and I found the cross section bits of Lego. And this sort of would do, it's a little bit small. So um, it might work, but I think it might make the door rattle about a bit. So uh, that may not be a good option. The next thing was I've got some Perspex rods here. This is a clear Perspex rod. And you can see that that actually matches uh, the diameter of the little peg that's on the unbroken side quite closely. So I thought maybe I could drill a hole out there and insert this in and we just have a clear peg which also uh, you know might work quite nicely. But then having again another look through my spares pot I found uh, a lot of load of bits that I thought would work absolutely perfectly and they are also He-Man bits. So here we have a selection of neck pegs. If you ever take the head off a He-Man figure Quite often inside, not, not in everyone, but in a lot of them, there are these pegs that hold the head in place. And they are perfect. They are about the right diameter, as you can see here. And they also come in varying colours. And I have a few here, and you'll notice that I've got one that is a green-grey colour, which matches the sort of green-grey of the Castle Grayskull quite nicely. So I think I'm going to use that to uh, fashion something that can be inserted in here and glued in place to replace this little missing peg. So my idea is to make something that goes in this hole. If you look at the hole, you can see that one side is solid and the other side there's a sort of a semicircular bit with a, the end of the cross section. So what I plan to do is to break the last bit of that cross out and make something that has a semicircular end that will sit in there. So I thought I'd do a quick test and I took one of the neck pegs, uh, not the right colour one because I wanted to do a test first, and I've carefully trimmed down the end as you can see, to be a semi-circular thing. So I've chopped off, if we look at them together, that's an original one on the left, I've chopped off the, the little sort of plinth at the bottom and then chopped in half, 
part of the peg using a pair of uh, plastic cutters that I have here. So if you go carefully, this is easily done. So now I reckon that if I chop out that last little peg there, uh, this should slot in and should work quite nicely, in which case I will then go and make the one in the correct colour and we will fit it all. So let's see if I can remove this little uh, last bit of plastic using these uh, plastic cutters. Should be possible. Like so, and there you can see we now have a semicircular hole in there. So with some careful trimming of the neck peg, I've now got it down to a sort of a more finalised shape, and uh, this does actually fit quite nicely into that little semicircular gap there. And as you can see, it's going to form quite a nice sort of replacement peg. I've left it slightly long as well because I think it should uh, work slightly better. So I can do a quick proof of concept, and uh, we'll see if this actually works. So I've not actually glued this peg in place because obviously I want to do it with the proper colour one, but we can just check that this is going to work by slotting this into the front section and get the door in place, like so. And there you can see it will actually work. That door is now going to shut quite nicely. Uh, and if I open it, it should hinge down. So I think that's uh, going to work quite well. So let's go ahead and we'll make the final version of this peg. So I've now cut my final version, which is uh, pretty much the same as the original sort of test one I did there, but it's now in this sort of more greeny plastic. And this one's actually a bit of a snugger fit. I've been able to cut it so that it's quite a tight fit into that gap, which is exactly what I wanted. So now it's just a case of gluing it in place. So I'm going to use some uh, Evo stick serious glue. I quite like this stuff because it uh, tends to it goes off in about sort of six to ten minutes and then takes 24 hours to dry fully. So I should be able to squirt quite a large amount into this uh, gap if I just uh, get squeeze in there. So, large amount like that, and I'll put a little bit extra on this piece here. always wipe away any excess like so and then we can push that into place do that right way around so you can see it on camera and hopefully that once dry will be of quite a sturdy replacement hinge so that looks pretty good so I'm just going to wipe away some of that excess and we'll let that dry so now that the hinge is repaired, I just need to repair this uh, broken bit here. And I think the simplest way to do that is just actually a bit of super glue uh, dropped into the gap there uh, and around just to try and glue everything back together. I'm just seeing if there's any other bits broken, but it's just, it's obviously the glue has come apart and it's starting to crack there. So I think all we can do is uh, very carefully, do this on camera, squirt a bit of um, super glue in just along that seam there. Uh, if I can get some on that peg, that would be even better. You can't see that there, but there you go. There's a, there's a peg inside, so I'm just squirting a bit of super glue on that. Uh, and then I can gently squeeze this back together and let the super glue go off, and that should hold everything back in place, and we shouldn't have any more problems. So now everything's dried and glued, we can uh, see if this door fits. As you can see, that the peg that I have attached is actually slightly longer. I probably could have uh, trimmed that down, but it didn't seem uh, worthwhile doing, because actually the door's a little bit loose anyway, even with these long pegs, so I think a, a slightly longer peg may help uh, get this door to fit a bit better. So let's uh, slot this in place, so I can just slot that one in there. You can uh, tip that up and through. Slot the other side in. As you can see, that door now works perfectly. If I turn the, the front section of Castle Grayscale around, you can see that it fits quite nicely. Uh, if I lock the door, it all holds in place. The peg's working quite nicely. And if I just pull this forward, slide that back, you can now open the door again. And uh, that looks pretty good. So we can get on with uh, fixing the rest of this uh, rather large playset. For replacing the missing cardboard bits on uh, Carl for Grayscale, I've had a quick search online and found there's a website called Toy Jesus who has quite a nice scan of the original cardboard insert still uh, sort of within their, uh, their sort of cardboard mount. Uh, and I've taken that scan into Photoshop and done quite a lot of work touching it up because I didn't think the scan uh, was quite good enough to print. There's a lot of little blemishes in that. So what I've done is removed those blemishes and tidied up all of the lines uh, and then uh, printed it again. This is printed onto some uh, just sort of photo 
photo quality uh, luster type paper um, because uh, I don't have a, a printer that will print straight onto card. I'll uh, make my version of this file available on my website but uh, do remember the original one is from Toy Jesus and I've marked that very clearly on my version uh, but this is just a sort of slightly tidied up version. So this has been printed on sort of normal printer luster type paper. Uh, it's a bit thin and not, not really card like enough so I found some card. Now this card came if you buy packs of printer paper sort of photo quality stuff generally it's packaged between two bits of card and the card is quite nice quality. So I'm just going to use that to uh, uh, stick this uh, printout onto and I'm just going to stick it on using some Pritt stick. So liberally put Pritt stick on the back of this, stick it onto the card and then it's time to cut that out. So let's go ahead with that. That's enough glue, so now we can stick that onto the card, make sure it fits to all the edges, like so, and make sure it's glued down good and firmly before we cut it out. So now that that's all glued down it's just a case of cutting out and following these sort of cut lines that were on the original scan uh, and we should have some nice versions of uh, these cardboard inserts. So let's get cutting. Now that I've cut all the bits out, the final thing we need to do is score them. As you can see, I've already scored that one so that it stands up. That's these little weapons rack. Uh, we also need to score this uh, pilot guy with a little computer system. So what you need is a ruler and something with a dull edge. You don't want to. You don't actually want a knife. I'm going to use the edge of a, uh, a screwdriver here. As you can see, this is on my uh, Stanley knife, and I just want to score a line down, not cut. This is just to sort of create an indent so that the card will bend. So if I just Put that exactly where this needs to be which is just on the edge there and sort of with some force push down um, but you don't want to cut you just want to sort of leave a little dent so like so do this a few times and hopefully once you've done that you can see well you can't actually see it's very faint but I now should be able to bend this card and it will bend along the scored edge like so which is exactly what we need if I bring in the base here uh, should be able to slot this into the gap there with a nice bend in place. So there you go, you can see that fits quite nicely. So we can now go ahead and start putting uh, Castle Greyskull back together. Now that I've sorted out the top surface of the trapdoor, we can go about to reattaching this sticker. I could print this out again, but sometimes it's nice to keep the original stickers. And this one is not in too bad condition. It's a little bit curly on the edges and there's a slight tear in this corner. But I think uh, by the time this is glued back in place, it should look pretty good. So really the only thing I've got to do is to actually stick this back on. What I'm going to use is some Pritt stick, the same thing I used to make the cardboard inserts. Uh, and again, just get a piece of paper and I'm going to put the sticker down, liberally coat it with Pritt stick and then glue it back onto the trapdoor. So let's get that started. Make sure you cover the whole surface with Pritt stick. Uh, so that it sticks as firmly as it possibly can and on the ripped bit I'm going to put extra amounts just so that it sticks nicely. Now we can stick that to back on. So just kind of lining it up. As you can feel there's a little bit of an area there that doesn't have glue on so it's just make sure it does. back on. Now you can see that the sticker actually gets caught in the hinge section there so that's quite good so just make sure that that's uh, stuck inside the hinge. Just push that down. And that should be pretty good. 
The final missing sticker on this Carlton Grayskull uh, is the uh, little banner that hangs down from one of the upper platforms. Now, again, I found this on the uh, toyjesus.com website uh, and uh, printing it out, it seems pretty good quality, so I'm not going to bother changing it at all. If you want to get it, go to toyjesus.com. I've actually just printed this out on sort of normal luster type uh, printer paper, sort of photo quality printer paper, uh, because it just hangs. I'm just going to stick a little bit of uh, double sided tape across the top of it so that the back of it won't be sticky, but just the little top bit will stick and uh, it'll hang down quite nicely and I think that should do the job so I think uh, now we're ready to put most of Castle Grayskull back together and I will then stick this in place once we have everything uh, where it should be. So the first thing to do is to clip the main hinges back together it's the same uh, as when you unclip them just be very careful that you're clipping them be quite gentle and they will clip together uh, with a, with ease. We can now go ahead and start putting some of the platforms back in place. The first level we're going to put in is the one with the throne and the trap doll. So we have to just uh, reconstruct the throne mechanism. As you can see here, uh, this is the main sort of uh, locking bit. And it needs to clip over that hole there. There's a little tab and it's a little bit sort of fiddly but you just sort of rotate it around and it will clip in place. Then you can rotate this back that's where the throne needs to pop through and there's a peg on the bottom of the throne that needs to go into this slot so you just sort of you can all do it all from one side it's fairly straightforward like so. so you can see I've got a little peg through and that's the center rotation part of the throne and just pop that through like so and it should all fit in place now we can go ahead and clip the little trapdoor with the sticker that I've stuck back on again just be a little bit careful with these they do clip on quite nicely, like so, and that should all fit in place. And if I rotate the chair, the mechanism should unlock and the trapdoor opens, which is great. So we can now uh, go ahead and drop this floor into Castle Grayskull. The floors just clip on either side. There should be a little peg here on the back that clips into that hole there. It's actually snapped off uh, on this one, but really isn't that important because there's another bit there that sort of holds everything in place. So you can get away with not having that peg. That's, but you can just clip that round and clip that on. And there you go, that's now fitted quite nicely. At this point we can add the first of the cardboard inserts that I've made. So uh, this just needs to slot on the back uh, little pegs there and uh, because of the fold that I've added it should just fit in quite nicely like so and uh, finishes off that level completely. Next up we can fit the top two levels that go on either side of this section and these are just uh, bits of plastic that slot in place. There's no uh, sort of uh, clips or anything on it and then we have this one here which is the gun side. So obviously we need to clip the gun in place uh, which again just slides in, nothing special, and also then clip uh, the gun in. It's best to put the gun in. If you turn, if you look at the uh, mountain, turn it round so that the angled bits are facing you, then you can slot the gun in from this side. This is the easiest way to slot this in because everything's a little bit wider that side. And clip it in like so. That fits nicely and rotates, and then that can be slotted in the other side like that. And then of course finally we have the flag. We've got the evil side of the flag and the good side of the flag and this just needs to clip on this uh, bit of there. can go any way you like really but uh, that's where I want to put it today. Now to start on the other side. First up we're going to put in the other cardboard bit that needs to go on these walls which is the sort of computer screen. Uh, there's a hole in the top that I've cut there which needs to slot onto this little peg uh, and it's fairly straightforward. You just sort of slot it on at an angle and it it rests on the top bit there so it's fairly straightforward to do like so and that cardboard piece is now in place we can now go ahead and add the next floor this left side floor uh, clips in just the same as the right hand side floor uh, and we need to do this first before adding the lift section again there are supposed to be two little pegs uh, one there uh, and one there this one snapped off it's not vital that you have these it does clip in place without them uh, but uh, obviously if you do have them it's much better so we just slide these in like so and clip that floor in place we can now go ahead and attach the lift section. There are two parts to this. There is the lift itself and the little bar that it rises up on. Now this bar has one a top end and a bottom end. The top end is notable because it has a hole in it which we will thread some string through uh, in, in a minute. Uh, and this all needs to be put together first. So you have to slide this uh, pole through the back two sections of the lift like so. Uh, and then you can drop this in 
and there are pegs on the back here and here that need to be pegged into holes here and there's one up the top there it's fairly straightforward to do push that in place like so and we can now attach the string so to get the lift working we need to attach a bit of string. I've got a bit of string here that looks quite ropey which should do the job quite nicely. It might have been easier to actually attach this string before I've fitted this but uh, obviously uh, I've done it the wrong way around. But I'm going to use a pair of tweezers to just thread this uh, string through uh, and then grab the other side like so. So, and then I'm going to tie a knot at the bottom end before threading it through the top. Now that we have this string attached to the bottom, the next thing to do is thread it through the top and then attach the gargoyle. Uh, and the gargoyle will need to be attached a specific length away, um, but we'll work that out in a second. So first up, I'm going to thread the string through uh, and make sure that that lift actually works. So there's the threaded string. If I pull this, the lift should rise up, which it does. So the trick with the lift is getting it to stop and stay at the actual height of the floor. So what I've done is I've threaded the gargoyle through the, with the string and I'm now going to raise the lift up until it's at the right level, like so, and I'm going to hook the gargoyle, which is how it's supposed to work, under the edge of the lip of the level and then I'm going to very carefully hold this and tie a knot so that the gargoyle is exactly at the right height. Uh, this is easier said than done, but it is possible. So just make sure you hold the string like so. And tie a knot, if it's a firm knot, I'm going to tie one more knot there. Let's hope I get this right, because if it's wrong, it's a pain to undo the knots. Like so. So now you can see that the lift goes all the way to the bottom. And if I pull the string and hook the gargoyle, let's hook him under there then you can see that the lift is now held at the correct level. So the final thing to add is this little banner that needs to hang off one of the upper floors. So to do that, I'm just going to use some, this is double-sided sticky tape. I'm just going to carefully stick a bit of double-sided sticky tape along the top edge of this banner, like so. Trim off the excess, and then we can stick that under the uh, lip of one of the green upper floors. So I just need to remove the backing of the double-sided tape and then I'm going to stick it to, uh, this is the gun floor uh, and there's a slight lip at the back there so I'm just going to stick this onto there like so. Then we can slot that back in place and that should sit sort of quite neatly behind the throne chair and hang down like so. And so here we have Castle Grayskull back up and running. Everything is in place. The uh, new cardboard inserts look pretty good. I've also done the little weapons rack there and also the full weapons rack there. And then we have the little training device that you can flick and it will spin around the ladder to the upper floor. The uh, throne with the secret trapdoor. So if I rotate He-Man round, the trapdoor should spring open and an unwilling victim will fall down into the pit below. Uh, we also have the lift that works, if I just uh, unhook that now. Uh, we can lower He-Man down to the ground floor, so that's all quite nice. Uh, and everything is back in place. If I turn this round now, we'll be able to see the uh, drawbridge working with the replaced hinge and everything back how it should be. And so here we have the front of Castle Grayskull with the drawbridge and the repaired hinge that I did earlier. And you'll see that now the door opens, ready for Skeletor to try and battle into and destroy He-Man's lair. Often when fixing toys, it's all too easy to think that you just have to replace something if it's broken. But more often than not, there's a way to repair something and make it work just as it used to. So you don't have to go down the route of hunting something down and paying over the odds for a small bit of plastic. As I've shown with the uh, drawbridge and other areas like the cardboard bits, you can make them yourself or you can repair them yourself and it will look just as good and work just as well as it did originally. So I hope that uh, restoration of Castle Grayskull has been of interest to you, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Polloi. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Polloi on Twitter and Facebook.